I'm here today with Dr. Saru Sharda, Associate Dean of Equity and Inclusion at the Faculty of Health Sciences. Welcome, Dr. Sharda, and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, intersectionality is a term that I believe many of us will have heard, or maybe many of us do not fully understand. Can you explain to us what intersectionality means? Yes, and this is a great question because this term actually appears in the Hamilton Charter for Promoting Gender Equity in Healthcare. And the term actually was first coined by Professor Kimberly Crenshaw. And what intersectionality is, a theory or a framework that allows us to understand that when people or groups of people have more than one identity, that those identities can come together in ways that can actually produce complicated, overlapping patterns of discrimination. For example, if a woman is a woman and is also racialized, and those two things cannot be separated. If a woman is a woman and also lives with a disability, those two things cannot be separated. If somebody identifies as queer and also uh, has a disability, those two things cannot be separated. Why this is important is because if we don't take an intersectional lens when we're thinking about events or movements or healthcare interventions, that can actually mean that when we aim to address injustice towards one group, we inadvertently end up perpetuating inequities towards another group. Why is it important that we think about intersectionality not only in our clinical setting, but in the other domains that are so important to us, such as research and education? If we think about healthcare outcomes and we look at healthcare outcomes for groups of people, for example, women and people who give birth, we might look at that group of people and look at what we know about those healthcare outcomes and think, we're actually doing quite well. But if we break that down and look a little bit more carefully and intentionally, for example, at the outcomes within that group for indigenous, black, racialized people giving birth, we actually see a much different picture. Similarly, if we look at COVID-19 data from the height of the pandemic, when we look at the Ontario public health data, we know that if you lived in a more ethno-culturally diverse area, you were three times more likely to get COVID-19. And in fact, you were two times to four times as likely to end up in the ICU or even to die from COVID-19. And so all that links us back to the really important root causes of social determinants of health, of which racism is a key one, and of course, as clinicians, we then need to understand when we have healthcare interventions that need to address this, they need to be based on that data and they need to be culturally safe and, and have cultural humility built into them. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Sharda. That explains very well how important it is for us to include this in all the activities we do clinically in research and education. I really do appreciate you sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.